Right now, I'm setting up the uh, little tent. So, uh, so I'll sit right here, and I'll be able to use the computer on the table. There's a mount, and uh, there's some clouds. They're moving out. The moon is nice and bright tonight. And uh, Ryan is just down by the peak of the house here, setting. Sirius still nice and bright. Should be a nice and cold night. So I've been fighting with the wind for the past like 15 minutes now. But I finally got the tent weighed down. Got my little heater going, warming up the inside. Chair on the table set, get the power to the mount. So just some getting the scope on, the laptop out, and we can begin. So this is the little guy with the takeoff of the main bracket that the scope gets hooked to with your rings. And uh, it's just two little screws on the top that connects from the bottom portion. But it's kind of screwy. Uh, the screws that go in are underneath the scope because this is like where my finger is, is where the bracket would go. So I had to take the whole scope off with the rings and then take the screws out and pull him off. As you can see, compared to the normal dovetail, it's substantially smaller and the Sirius just can't quite get it. And so I was thinking, well, rather than use the one that's on it, kind of the smaller one, why don't I just put this extension onto him? Well, screws don't line up. So on the top or the bottom. So that was out of the question. But uh, you need a metric uh, Allen wrench for your 2.5. And now uh, for these screws, since these screws are a little bit smaller than the ones that hold the scope in. Where's that here? That little bit right there. Can't really focus. There he is. So once you take those two guys out, uh, it pops right off. And uh, then you get it separated. So we just got covered in an intense cloud cover. Out of nowhere. Every app says it's clear. And here we are, completely covered. <sighs> so we beat the clouds, they finally cleared. And uh, got my first 50 second exposure in. And uh, you can actually see some nebulosity in here. Seder region. There's Seder there in the center. And uh, I'm pretty well it's lined up with it. Uh, so now, wait for those last little bit of clouds to clear and uh, we'll start my exposures on it. So far, this new scope has a really good framing. I mean, it takes this entire region and this is a, it's a pretty big spot. So I'm hoping my entire image is all nebulosity. That would be pretty sweet. So uh, we'll see what happens. So I did a quick stack of like my first six or seven minutes on uh, the Seder region. And I'm just doing, I did a, I do a quick stretch here. Just a, it was basically, I stacked them just for it to be a test to see if Deep Sky recognizes my stars. Cause uh, I had a little incident with the monkey head nebula. Uh, went to shoot it and somehow my focus got off and my stars got screwed. And uh, I didn't realize it until I was doing a stack. 
and it didn't register any of the stars. And yeah, I mean, these look nice and sharp. If I can, uh... Yeah, we got some nebulosity up here. This might be a very good image. So uh, I'm doing 55 second subs for about two and a half hours. Uh, I'm getting nebulosity in individual frames, which is impressive to me, at least for uh, 55 second subs. And uh, I'm using the Allen Hans filter. I'm in Bortle 7 and uh, with the full moon. So I'm battling quite a bit right now, but and there's a slight wind, you know, it's a constant breeze, but luckily it's such a small scope. I don't get any, it's not a wind sail, I guess you could say. Like I don't get any drag or uh, push on it. Um, kind of hard to balance it. I know it's just because I'm using the Orion Sirius, so it only came with two 15 pound counterweights. So I have it all the way up and uh, I have the counterweight bar tucked up and it actually balanced decently. There's a, just the slightest sway, but uh, I mean, really nothing more than like when I have the 61 on there. And uh, so, so far so good. Uh, with the flattener, this scope comes with a flattener, you know, corrector built in. And uh, the, star, the stars, the stars are sharp all the way to the edges, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Well, 5:15 a.m. Still out here imaging. Um, kind of in a race against the sun right now. Uh, it's already kind of starting to lighten up on that on the eastern horizon. So these last hour or so photos might be washed out. Uh, I haven't checked because I haven't opened the tent door. It's so warm in here, I don't want to lose it. But uh, I'm assuming I'm still shooting. And I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but uh, that's Vega right there. And uh, Cygnus is just over there to the left. And, uh, it's a beautiful, clear night out. Once all those clouds left, it turned into a gorgeous night. And the moon is still nice and bright up there. Yeah, it's been a pretty good night time. It's funny, We've got a big old bright satellite that just passed right in front of Seder. So he's gonna be cut through my image. <laughs> I figures. I'm impressed. Tonight was awesome. The scope did fantastic. Uh, it's framing it is perfect. Uh, for a nice wide field it's not too wide but it's the perfect it's the perfect framing around most of these targets and these bigger targets and uh yeah so i'll finish off this video and uh, show you guys two images and uh kind of make your mind up you know see for yourselves if the scope is a worthy investment for you and uh it is for me so uh have a good one guys clear skies